the San Francisco Bay Area, home of the Golden Gate Bridge, Big Tech, and state-of-the-art diesel trains from the 1950s. Well, that is until now. Hello and welcome to San Jose's Duridin Transit Center, right next to the heart of downtown San Jose. It's currently a steamy 27 degrees in the middle of September, but I'm not here to talk to you about the weather. Today is an exciting day in the history of the Bay Area's public transportation history. Today is the first day that the Caltrain electric trains are running in service and are fully replacing, apparently, the old fleet of diesel trains that have been running and servicing the Caltrain line for however many years or decades has been before this. Now, the reason why this is such a game changer is because it's going to cut down express commutes from San Jose to San Francisco to just under an hour. And on the weekend, the all stop service will just take around an hour and 20 minutes to get from here right into the middle of San Francisco. Big game changer. Why? Previously, if I was to make this commute on the weekend, it would take almost two hours, like one hour, 45 minutes. And until today, the only other way to get to San Francisco from San Jose without a car was via BART. And this itself wasn't the smoothest process. From downtown San Jose, it's around a 15 minute drive to the nearest BART station, Berryessa, and then a one hour to one and a half hour train ride, depending on if you get a direct service or one that involves changing trains. This doesn't include time spent waiting for a train, which tends to be more of a problem these days as BART seems more prone to delays as of late. Plus, BART does not operate the direct Green Line service from San Francisco to San Jose at night, meaning the total door-to-door -door journey could take almost two hours, depending on where in SJ you live. This brand new all-electric Caltrain service from central San Jose cuts us down to one hour and 20 minutes off peak and does not require any change of train to get between SJ and SF, which simplifies the journey and saves time. Okay, so you can top up your uh, clipper card. If you have a physical clipper card, uh, you can top them up over here. Just place your card over here and blah, blah, blah. But uh, today I'm just going to use a phone app. See to San Francisco, 126 departs at platform four. And $6 is now it. So, ride the train. So you can tap on on any of these readers. And let's head over to track four. So we want to get the Palo Alto. So they'll get us there in around half an hour, which is actually not too bad. It's around the same amount of time it takes me to drive and then park at Palo Alto for us to go there. Now the reason why I'm going to Palo Alto is because they're doing a uh, one of the main launch parties of them. They're going to do an official announcement, welcome, blah blah, blah so let's go check that out. I eagerly awaited to see what was inside as I hopped aboard this very special service, one of the very first electric Caltrain services to run on this corridor. New timetable effective today. Nice. From San Francisco to San Jose. So let's do a bit of a tour. So we saw one of the main cabins. It looks like there's two main decks and a center deck over here. And this has a whole area for bikes, which is actually pretty cool. Oh, okay. They even paint the, the bike symbol on the door. It's cool. All right, let's go upstairs. So got another deck here with some seating. And up here. So, so you got some storage like racks on the top. Okay, that's cheap. 
Let's try the seats. Mm, everything is so much nicer when it's brand new, isn't it? This is really... Wow, oh, it's got a good height too. You know, to be completely honest, I was actually quite surprised that until now, Caltrain was using diesel trains. The first time I rode one, maybe six months ago, I was quite shocked. I'm like, wow, um, I didn't know that these were uh, still around for a regional rail network, uh, especially in the Bay Area. But um, when I heard that they were going to be doing these electric trains, I was like, wow, that's, that's great news. And it looks like the turnout today is fantastic. Being the first day of electric service, it's really quiet. And it's more so what I'm used to um, the mother train networks have been on, but for a regional, uh, a regional train network, this is actually uh, quite, quite great. Um, it's quiet, it's smooth. The same, however, cannot be said of the old diesel trains. Yeah, look at that, it's so quiet. Oh look, they even have tables like the old Caltrain sets had. Okay. Let us continue doing our tour of the uh, train. I have no clue what these are. section here for bikes have is that the schedule for the trains on the weekend are every half hour so two trains an hour which for a regional service which covers around 80 kilometers it's decent it would be nice if it was maybe every 20 minutes you know three trains an hour but you can't ever you can't have everything um, so it's an improvement from the previous car train schedule which I believe was like every 40 minutes every hour even we'll I'll have to check that um, so at least this is more frequent and at least in my experience Caltrain has been fairly on time um, there's only been a couple of times where the train's been late but most of the time it goes on the dot so uh, it should be a fairly reliable way to get to and from uh, San Jose and the city and then also all the little stations in between up the peninsula it appeared that like myself much of the community was also very excited for this new project as there were a ton of people waiting to board this train at this station. It was great to see the train so packed, and it was beginning to look reminiscent of the crowded subways in New York City, or even a decently packed train back in Sydney. Granted that the trains were free for this weekend, still, if Caltrain can keep up this ridership going forward, 
Hopefully that opens a room to more frequent services. It's great to see so much excitement about public transport. Uh, it really is, especially um, in the Bay where a lot of it does feel pretty car-centric, but I don't think the public transport is too bad for a US metropolitan area. Um, but I'm so glad to see the turnout here today. And I hope this leads to pretty good ridership and hopefully in turn, increased and more frequent services. While I was walking through this final carriage, I'd started to notice some people wearing lanyards which had a congresswoman's name on it. And I had no clue who this congresswoman would be. Turns out that this was congresswoman Anna Eshoo, whose name I also just learned up today. She is the local congresswoman for this area and she was responsible for helping to procure much of the funds which made the Caltrain electrification possible. It looks like they even named this train after her too, which is pretty cool. You all strengthened my hand in making the case at the federal government. And you know what? One of the first things I told all the big shots, my constituents have even chosen to tax themselves, to raise their taxes, the sales tax, so that there would be an investment in Caltrain. After that inspirational speech, I decided to go and wander around the launch party to see what else was on offer. I came across a booth advertising the California High Speed Rail proposals, in which I learned of a future plan for how Caltrain would integrate with the High Speed Rail network. Okay, sure. So the uh, the High Speed Rail is going to interline with the Caltrain in the future? Correct. So we okay. are going to be, that's why we're very excited to be here today as part of Caltrain's electrification because Caltrain's electrification is high speed rail infrastructure. Right. right. We're, we're using overhead contact wire. Our trains are going to be 100% electric. Yeah. And um, we're actually um, looking to uh, power our trains with 100% renewable energy. Okay. So, uh, so yes, uh, we are operating what we call internally as a blended corridor, um, which is just to say that both Caltrain and High Speed Rail will show, share tracks between San Francisco, San Jose, Gilbert. Oh, sure. Okay. Hey, quick question. What is it like driving this compared to the diesel ones? Oh, it's pretty awesome. Yeah? Yeah, it is. I don't mind it at all. It's actually really smooth and quiet. Okay. Are the controls a lot simpler than the old ones? or? I still miss the old ones. Oh, you do? Yeah. Okay, why is that? <laughs> just because I like it better. Just yeah. a challenge. Okay, yeah. fair enough, but is this easier to drive? Oh yeah, way easier. Way easier? Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, nice meeting you, man. Yeah, you too. Have a good one. After wandering around some more and grabbing some <laughs> freebies along the way, I decided it was time to head into Palo Alto for a well-deserved dinner. It was finally time to leave Palo Alto, and while I was waiting for the train, I'd noticed that it wasn't performing so great for its first day of service. The ETA of the train kept getting delayed by a minute every minute. You can see it going up to 6 minutes, then 8, then 11, 13, 14, 15. Alright, we were finally on the train back. It ended up being around 13, 14 minutes late. Great for its first day. Um, yeah, but uh, at least we're finally on board. Same train as before, at least same model. Uh, looks like it's a fairly busy train. You can probably see back there. A lot of people coming from the city, I presume, back to San Jose, or uh, raining stops towards San Jose. But yeah, let's enjoy this train back to SJ. And I was just reading on uh, Reddit on what other people's reviews on this train were, and uh, there were a couple comments regarding the seat design, which, now to look at it, you know, I guess I didn't notice before because it was so crowded, but they had a really sharp 90 degree angle. And whilst I don't know how they perform on the full journey from uh, San Jose to SF, I can see why they'll be uncomfortable. Granted that the seats on the old trains were actually pretty nice and ergonomic. I mean, I guess I've got to find out for myself whether these trains have good seats. But that seems to be a fairly common complaint so far about these trains, so maybe that is one bad thing about these new electric trains that, you know, Caltrain should have paid attention to more. So I heard at the launch party that they, um, I heard that there's Wi-Fi on these trains and it looks like there is a Caltrain Wi-Fi here, so if we give that a go, we have to sign into the network. Welcome to Caltrain's free Wi-Fi service, I accept the terms and conditions. Okay. Connected. 
load up the news article. A bit slow. Okay, we got there in the end. I also ran a speed test, which yielded some surprising results. And San Jose Mineta International Airport. Okay, that's actually a pretty good download speed. Wow, that is actually faster than a lot of internet back in Australia. Huh. Okay. Wow. That is a really fast upload speed too. One other thing, are there charges here? Because I know the old Cal trains have charges. Oh, we do have charges down here. Wow. It's actually really cool, so you have charges and pretty decent Wi-Fi. So you get a lot of work done. With the Wi-Fi and charging test complete, we pulled into San Jose Station. Well, we finally made it back to San Jose. The verdict? I'm excited, but cautiously optimistic. The more frequent services and shorter travel times alone are already a significant improvement for residents who live along the Caltrain corridor, along with a smoother ride and decent Wi-Fi and charging facilities. However, the late trains were not a great start, and I heard that even today while I was editing this on the 23rd of September, the trains were delayed by more than an hour because of a power outage near San Mateo Station. I also didn't really talk about price either, but the cost of a ticket from San Jose to San Francisco is around $9, which is not cheap. Time will tell whether these are just growing pains or become chronic problems. I'm also hoping that if ridership increases, so too will service frequency. But for now, it's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy the quicker and smoother train journey on Caltrain.